Before we start today's video, make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave a like. Hello, now that I'm face to face with you, let's talk about today's project. So a few months ago, all the way back, I think March 15th, I set up a nano aquarium. Now this was kind of my first nano aquarium and it was the first time that I had like, you know, really gone into that like nano world. And also when I posted that video, I said that I was going to have some inhabitants in it. And well, I think it's about time that we introduce those inhabitants. Now I don't have them yet because there's a few things that I need to do to it now, but the inhabitants, and if any of you guessed this, good job, is going to be cherry shrimp. Cherry shrimp have been something that I've wanted to work with for a while. I've never kept any sort of like fish or anything like that in like aquariums and whatnot. So I thought, what better place to start than cherry shrimp? Now the way that I had this aquarium set up was, I started by grabbing a three gallon rimless aquarium that I then built a scape to kind of look like a tree kind of rooting over a rock formation. Then I added aqua soil, sand, and the little detail rocks. I decided to add a little more to the hardscape to give it some riparian growth. And then I finished it off with plants and filled it up. If you guys would like to see more on that video, definitely go check it out as a cool one. But uh, let me show you what the aquarium looks like today. Okay, we're down here at the aquarium. So here's what it looks like. It's not looking too hot. A lot of the plants have died because I kind of neglected it for like a month straight. Um, but some of the rabbit's foot ferns are alive, the air plants are doing well, and then the java ferns in the back seem to be doing okay. I also, when I set up this tank, I added two large pond snails, and you can see one of them right there, kind of, because my camera is such high quality. There's a floating one. That's a tiny little baby one. But yeah, they have reproduced like crazy, which for me is completely fine, except they produce a lot of waste, but uh, that's what cherry shrimp are for. Not only that, but a lot of the moss has died and you know, it's obviously just, it's not a good time in there. So we need to clean this thing up. And then I'm just going to add a few more plants, like some Anubias and you know, whatever, whatever in there, just to, you know, freshen up the look and make it look not like crap again. But uh, you see, the problem is, is I don't actually have any plants, nor do I have any cherry shrimp. So uh, it's time to take a trip to the store. We're going into the store. Cool. Secured the goods. Now let's go back home. Woo, come back from the store. Got some of the replacement plants as well as our shrimp. Look at the little guys just swimming around in there all happy and whatnot. So before we add our new plants in cherry shrimp, there is one thing that I need to do, and that is to make sure that the pH of this tank is appropriate. In case you don't know what pH is, it's basically the acidity level of the water. It goes on a scale from zero to 14, with zero being extremely acidic, and then 14 being extremely alkaline. Cherry shrimp thrive on a scale from about 6.5 to eight, so as long as we're within that range, we should be good to go. So this means that I have to boast open my water test kit. This right here is an API aquarium water test kit. You can get these at Petco, probably any aquarium store, even online. I originally bought this for my axolotl when setting up new tanks for him so that I could test the water parameters. But you can see right there, I've got some pH test solution. So we're just gonna mix up a vial of that like little scientists. And we're just gonna make sure that their home isn't too acidic. Make sure to put on your science gloves. Hi. Okay, so as you just saw, the pH is around 7.5, which is perfect for the cherry shrimp. Again, I said it's like 6.5 to 8, so we're in the clear. Okay, so now that our pH is tested, we got the shrimp, got the plants. The first thing I'm going to do is, I'm, like I said, I'm going to get in here and I'm going to do like a partial water change. I'm going to remove probably all of the substrate and then I'm going to go back in and top it with new substrate and then we'll get all the little plants in there. So let us get going, yes.
Okay, so as you can just saw, I took out all, not all of, but most of the old sand and replaced it with this new clean stuff just because it looks, well, cleaner. I also took out all the little rocks and then placed them back in place. I did also take out some of the plants and then the new ones, so that's probably the next step. So I'm just going to go ahead and replant those. And then um, I'll probably fill it back up and then, uh, yeah. So without further ado, let us plant. Okay, so our plants are all in place. It's kind of almost nearly impossible to see uh, anything right now because, well, it's all like, you know, cloudy and whatnot. So the next thing we're going to do is, uh, well, I want to try something. I'm not quite sure how this will work just for reasons, but I don't have any aquatic moss and I'm going to try some terrestrial moss in the water. Now I have done it before on these two little paludariums and they seem to be doing okay. So I'm just gonna take some of this moss and just grab little portions of it and stick it in there. So let's stick it in there. Okay, so I added the moss. Looks pretty good right now. I guess we'll see how it holds up long term and I might add a little bit more, but it's kind of hard to go forth with this thing because, well, the water's low for one and it's cloudy. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this back up with some water. And obviously because I will be using tap water, I will need to use some dechlorinator to get all of the chlorines out. So that's the next step and uh, let's do that. Okay, so the water's added, all dechlorinated. There are a few last things I need to do. I need to acclimate the shrimp, which I am going to do here in a sec, while I wait for the water to clear up and the uh, dechlorinator to kick in. And then I'm also, there's a rabbit's foot fern that's not doing the best, so I'm gonna replace it with the new one. Then one of the air plants fell off. So I got a few little things to do, but uh, we're almost done with the project. I can't wait to see the shrimp in here. So let's shrimp it up. Oh, hello there. As usual, I just want to say a huge thank you to you guys for watching through the entire video. It really means a lot to me. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said at the beginning, cherry shrimp is something that I've wanted to work with for a while. So this is, it feels really good to finally get this done. To be honest, when I first set up this tank, I did really like the look of it. And then over time, you know, it just, it got gross and I really was hating it and I was just dreading it. But having the opportunity now to go and clean it up and then bring it to life with the shrimp, it just, it feels so much better now. And I'm so glad to finally get it done. As of recording this right now, it's been a few days since I actually set it up and the shrimp seem to be doing great right now. I mean, they're feeding, they're you no know, running around like usual. But just thank you again for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to go check out the video on that aquarium if you want a little bit more information. Don't forget to check out last week's video. It's a really, really cool one. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and leave a like and I'll see you guys in the next one.